Today's topic is all about hip replacements and I will cover the following topics. Incidence and occurrence, pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, diagnostic tests and procedures, complications, pharmacology, client and family teaching, nursing implications, and finally the impact of hip replacements on the client and the healthcare system. Firstly, we will discuss the incidence and occurrence of hip replacements. Most hip replacements are the result of osteoarthritis. Therefore, older adults generally require more hip replacements. Other indications for replacement of the hip are fractures, avascular necrosis, dysplasia, and rheumatoid arthritis. Next up, we will discuss the pathophysiology. Osteoarthritis affects the synovial joints in the body and causes cartilage destruction. Pain is in response to the formation of new joint tissue. In Canada, there are approximately 30,000 hip fractures per year. 70 to 90 percent are caused by osteoporosis. 95 percent result from falls. Most fractures are caused by mechanical forces such as falls. However, pathological fractures happened and are secondary to a disease process. Avascular necrosis is caused by dislocation of the joint as a result of trauma, which results in poor blood supply that causes bone cell death. Hip dysplasia is the abnormal development of the anatomical structures of the hip, which can evolve over time. This can lead to distortion and malformation of the hip may be linked to genetics or environment. With rheumatoid arthritis, the exact cause is unknown. However, it may be a combination of genetic and environmental factors. It is believed to have an autoimmune etiology that causes the thickening of the synovial lining. The discussion of signs and symptoms is next. Both osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis cause pain, reduce quality of life, and reduce mobility. Fractures usually present with severe pain and tenderness. Visual inspection of the limb will display an external rotation and shortening of the affected extremity. Muscle spasms are also common. Signs of avascular necrosis usually start as mild pain that increases as the bone and joint begin to collapse. Pain will also limit range of motion. Hip dysplasia often presents with severe pain and mechanical symptoms such as locking, catching, snapping, and popping. Diagnostic tests include x-rays, MRI, and CT scans. The purpose of these tests are to help diagnose fractures or disease processes, to visualize defects, plan care and surgical interventions, and then to evaluate the outcomes of surgery. Now let us look at the two main procedures of hip replacement. Total hip arthroplasty is the replacement of both sides of the hip joint with a plastic and metal socket and a metal or ceramic ball and metal stem. Hip resurfacing is the replacement of the head of the femur and the socket with a metal or ceramic ball and a metal socket. A variety of complications can occur after surgery and it's important to review what could happen when caring for the post-op patient. 80 to 90 percent of myocardial infarctions occur as a result of thrombus formation which occludes blood flow to the heart. Deep vein thrombosis or DVT may occur in leg veins due to immobility, position of the body, or pressure. DVTs place a client at greater risk for pulmonary embolism. Dislocation is simply described as the displacement of the bone from its normal joint. A pulmonary embolism occurs when a thrombus travels from the peripheral venous system and gets lodged in the pulmonary arterial system. Pneumonia is an acute inflammation of the lungs caused by an infectious agent. 
older individuals and clients on bed rest with prolonged immobility are at an increased risk. Infection at the surgical site is an invasion by a microorganism. Infections may start in a localized area like a surgical incision. However, they can spread via the blood and become systemic. Due to the complications that may arise, the following are priority nursing assessments that should be completed. Behavioral, skin, respiratory, gastrointestinal, incisional, pain, and neurological conditions. A review and evaluation of care and the patient's response to treatment should also be completed. Prior to surgery, Patients may have the option of receiving a corticosteroid injection in the hip joint in order to reduce pain caused by inflammation. Cefazolin is an antibiotic that is commonly used for surgical prophylaxis as it provides good coverage against gram-positive bacteria and reduces the risk for post-op infection. Analgesics are given prior to surgery and in the post-op period to manage pain. An NSAID, such as naproxen, is commonly used with the addition of hydromorphone for breakthrough pain. Pregabalin is an anticonvulsant that is often given to decrease neuropathic pain. Blood thinners are given after surgery in order to prevent DVTs and blood clots. Clients will often start with sub-Q injections of anoxaparin in hospital and are discharged home with a Paxaban. With at-risk populations, such as older individuals or those with mobility issues, prevention of falls is essential. Removal of tripping hazards in the home and the use of mobility aids is important. However, as we are looking at the post-op hip replacement client, teaching should be focused on their discharge and what they should expect after surgery. The use of mobility aids such as walkers and crutches should be demonstrated. Proper positioning should also be discussed with the post-op client. Pillows should be placed in between legs to prevent the knee of the affected limb from crossing the midpoint of the body. Low seating should also be addressed as the hip should not bend more than 90 degrees. There will be limitations with mobility and the client should be taught to use aids to assist in the dressing of their lower body. Exercise is also an important part of the healing process. The needs and ability of the client should be assessed and instruction by a physiotherapist is ideal. Most importantly, clients and family should be taught the signs and symptoms of complications. These signs and symptoms include increased pain, the leg appears shorter, swelling, tenderness, redness, fever, increased drainage at the incision, redness, swelling, reduced mobility with walking, shortness of breath, and chest pain. Clients should be instructed to call their orthopedic surgeon or family physician if any of the listed symptoms occur. I've highlighted here what may be two priority nursing diagnoses and their interventions. First, we have impaired physical mobility relating to musculoskeletal impairment and surgery. Some interventions for this diagnosis may be assess for fear of falling, prior to physical activity assess pain and treat it, provide and teach use of mobility devices. Next, I've selected risk for peripheral neurovascular dysfunction related to surgical procedure. Here we want to assess for the early onset of compartment syndrome. And with this, we should be looking at the five P's, pain, pulses, pallor, paresthesia, paralysis. Also, assess for swelling and firmness. We also want to observe for signs of DVTs. And for this, we want to look for pain, tenderness, swelling in the calf and thigh, redness in the involved extremity, and we should perform serial leg measurements of the calf and thigh. Finally, in this presentation, we will look at the impact of the health challenge on the client, family, and healthcare system.
total hip replacement improves quality of life for clients more than other elective surgeries. Quality of life is improved by reducing pain, increasing mobility, and increasing activity. We can then come to the conclusion that the family of the client would also benefit from the client undergoing hip replacement. When clients become more independent, their family members are less stressed, and the overall family life is improved. Regarding the impact on the healthcare system, we can look at length of hospital stay. Hip fractures require one of the longest hospital stays, and they average more than 19 days. However, planned hip replacement is generally three to four days. Evidence suggests that planned hip replacement leads to health care cost savings. Therefore, if we replace the hip due to a condition like osteoarthritis before a fracture occurs, we can save the health care system money and improve quality of life for the client. Thank you for viewing this presentation on hip replacements. I hope you found it informative.